Hi gang, and welcome to today's video where we are going to compare Flow and Process Builder. If you're an admin who's feeling a little stressed because you're used to using Process Builder and now you have to start using Flow, this video was really built with you in mind. Now, when you create a new process and you first open the Process Builder screen, you have to choose from three options. If your process kicks off from the time when a record changes, a platform event message is received, or if it's invoked by another process. Now, if you go to create a new flow, you have to make a similar choice. So how do these types compare to Process Builder? Well, basically, these three process options correspond to three of the different flow types that are available. Choosing the record changes option in Process Builder is the same thing as choosing the record triggered flow option. Basically, your automation kicks off when something happens to a Salesforce record. The platform event message option in Process Builder corresponds to platform event triggered flows. This is relevant if your Salesforce instance uses an event architecture to talk to external systems. And then the final option in Process Builder is to build a process that's invoked by another process. You can basically think about auto launch flows in the same way. These are flows that need to be kicked off in order to fire, either by another process if you're still using Process Builder, another flow, a button, or something else. Now on the flow side, that just leaves your screen flows and your schedule triggered flows. Process Builder doesn't really have an equivalent for these. But if I had to pick an equivalent, screen flows most closely resemble quick actions in my opinion. So back to our Process Builder. I chose to create a process using that when a record changes option. So in the builder, the first step is to decide your object and your trigger. Does the process fire only when a record is created or when it's also edited? Going back to flow, if I click the record triggered flow type, I get more options here. Here I choose my object, but I can also choose two more triggers than what we had in process builder. I can choose whether a record is only updated and even if a record is deleted. I can also set the entry conditions if I decide I only want certain records to trigger my flow. And in the optimization section, I can choose whether the flow runs in before save mode, which is fast field updates, or after save mode, which is actions and related records. I'll link to another video I have that goes into the difference because it is a useful distinction for admins to understand. But the short version is that if I only need the record that triggers the flow to be updated, I can go with the fast field updates option and have it run more efficiently than it otherwise could in Process Builder or Workflow Rules. Back to Process Builder. Once we've decided our trigger and our triggering object, you get to decide the criteria for the first wave of actions, which is this diamond. So when you're setting up your criteria, you can choose fields on your triggering record or fields on related records. In Flow, you get a lot more options for adding filter criteria. Obviously, there's the start element, which we already covered, but in the Flow Builder, virtually all of the data elements, so all of these pink elements down here, have the option to filter for records. And these elements aren't just limited to the record that triggers your Flow or the records related to it. Barring a few caveats with whether you choose a delete trigger versus the other triggers and whether you choose a before save flow versus an after save, you can use these elements to interact with objects all across your Salesforce instance. Let's turn back to Process Builder. The immediate actions section here comes with this list of actions. Now the most common ones for you are probably going to be create a record, update records, and email alerts. In Flow, you get those options and then some. The create and update records elements cover what we saw in Process Builder, but remember with the update records element, you're not limited to updating the trigger record or its related records. You can update a lot more records as long as you're not using a before save flow. You'll also find that you have a lot more options for how you implement those actions and updates once you get a really good handle on these orange logic elements above. And of course, speaking about actions, Flow lets you delete records, which is pretty big. Let's look at schedule actions in Process Builder next. Here you can set an action to run hours or days before or after a certain date field on your trigger record. In Flow, you get the same capabilities 
using scheduled paths. So here you have your run immediately path, which is the default, but you can also add a new scheduled path. So let's say 10 minutes after account created, based on when the account is created, we're offsetting by 10 and we can say 10 minutes after. If you weren't paying super close attention there before, the minutes option isn't something that's available in Process Builder. On the side, you can easily create more than one scheduled path. And if you go to the advanced options, you can choose your batch size. So if your flow has a lot going on and you know it is possibly going to hit Salesforce limits, you can lower your batch size to help improve your flow's performance. And finally, let's just talk about the overall process builder layout. The way this works, your record triggers the process and then it cascades down each criteria node until one of the criteria nodes rings true. And this is generally how Salesforce formulas and decision logic actually works. But the layout can be a little tough to work with if you have a lot of criteria to evaluate. With the flow decision element, you might find as you get more practice with it that it's a lot easier to organize your logic. For example, here I have a decision element that takes four different paths based on four different account source options. And in the element settings itself, that cascading logic still applies. So as you get more comfortable using flows, you may find that this layout is easier to manage your logic overall. By now, you've hopefully heard the news that Process Builder is going away and that Flow is the future of Salesforce automation. While many admins are figuring out how to make that switch, the good news is that we don't lose functionality with the move. Flow just offers more when it comes to native automation functionality, both in terms of features we can see and use and also operational efficiency that runs in the background. It's also the closest we can get to using code in Salesforce without actually being developers. The big challenge is just that learning curve. If you've used Process Builder for a long time, you've probably developed a way of thinking about it that doesn't immediately click the same way when you open the Flow Builder. But as someone who's been there, I can tell you it just takes a lot of practice and a bit of focused learning to get there. So I hope this video was helpful. Let me know if you have questions or thoughts in the comments. If this video did something for you, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to know when more videos like this come out. Thanks.